Hey everyone, today we're going to be continuing with our series talking about reasons for Roth conversions in retirement. And the reason we're talking about today are Roth conversions for the next generation, passing money on to the next generation in a tax efficient way, helping the next generation save on taxes with Roth conversions. Now, this is an especially important uh, video since 2020. Okay, there was a watershed estate planning law that was passed in 2019 and was effective for 2020 called the SECURE Act. Uh, basically, a week prior to Christmas, while most of us were getting ready for the holidays, Congress was hard at work passing this watershed estate planning law. And it made Roth conversions that much more powerful uh, since 2020 and there on after. So we're going to get into this in this video today. However, if this is your first time on our Safeguard Wealth Management YouTube channel and you like the kind of content that we release, it would mean a ton to us if you hit the subscribe button. You'll be notified of all future content that we release and we release content each and every week. So let's get into it talking about this uh, watershed estate planning law and why Roth conversions make that much more sense since it was passed. So the SECURE Act created essentially three different classes of beneficiaries. Now I'm not gonna go into each of these, these three classes of beneficiaries. We've done this in a few other videos. I'll link to those videos in the top right hand corner if you're interested in learning a little bit more about the SECURE Act and this estate planning shift. However, under previous laws, if a, if a heir inherited a retirement account of yours, like a traditional IRA, there was something called the stretch rule, where basically based on how old they are, there was a formula set out that they were essentially able to stretch uh, distributions from that inherited IRA across their lifetime. Usually this meant that those distributions were relatively small. Well, with the new uh, SECURE Act, three different classes of beneficiaries were created. The most common class is gonna be this class right here called designated beneficiaries. This is gonna be when you pass money on to non-spouses primarily, a son or a daughter, which again is probably gonna be the most common for many of you watching this video. And we'll replace the stretch rule with something called the 10-year rule. Basically this 10-year rule uh, specifies that you have to uh, distribute, your heir has to distribute that full retirement account within 10 years. Now it's technically 11 years because uh, they don't that, that clock doesn't start until the year after you pass away, but I'm just gonna keep referring to it as 10 years. Just know that there's a little ripple that you technically have 11 years, okay? But this is gonna apply to all tax deferred accounts, traditional IRAs, as well as Roth IRAs. And again, within these 10 years, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of variation, a lot of different combinations that you can use for distributions. You don't have to do any amount in any given year. The overall rule is that you have to have it all distributed by the end of that 10th year. Okay, well this can create a situation now, rather than being able to stretch distributions out for your entire life like previous laws, this time schedule is now condensed, which means you're gonna be, uh, your heirs are gonna be forced to pay higher taxes, almost any way that you slice it. Let's say that you're passing on a million dollar traditional IRA to an heir. Okay, well, if we don't even include growth and that person distributes equally periodically throughout those 10 years, well, we're talking about a $100,000 distribution. Again, that's not even counting growth. So all of a sudden, a $100,000 distribution can really push that error into higher tax brackets, okay? And so this creates a situation where, again, that error can be put into some real tax, uh, tax cost situations because of you passing on a large uh, retirement account. And again, this, this counts for both traditional IRAs as well as Roth IRAs, okay? And just like RMDs uh, when, that you're specified to take during your life, there's a 50% penalty for non-compliance. So let's say you had an heir that didn't know about this 10-year rule and they didn't distribute the, that full million dollar IRA within those 10 years. And let's say uh, by year 10, they were $100,000 short. There was $100,000 left in that inherited IRA. Well, guess what? They're gonna owe a $50,000 tax penalty to the IRS because they didn't know about this rule. And so now this creates a situation where Roth conversions, if your tax uh, if your uh, tax situation, your tax brackets, or your tax rate is lower than your heirs, it can make a lot of sense to Roth convert while you're still alive in order to save on taxes going into the next generation. And so this is often a topic that we talk about in a lot of our presentations and a lot of our events. Tax planning isn't only about you. Okay, if you're gonna be tax planning throughout your life, trying to avoid the social security tax torpedo, trying to minimize RMDs, trying to avoid the capital gains bump zones, okay? You're gonna spend all of this time and energy uh, 
saving on taxes during your life, which is a fantastic goal, fantastic thing to do. I think, again, it, this is basically our mantra, you don't need more money, you need a better plan. I think everybody should be focused on tax planning and retirement. But only focusing on your life and not focusing on the next generation, I think is a huge mistake. Okay, why do we focus on tax planning during our life? Okay, to make sure that we retain the most amount of our wealth and it continues to grow for us. Well, if we just stop that at the end of our life and pass on our hard-earned wealth to our heirs, and the heirs have to pay a ton in taxes that we could have saved in taxes while we're alive, okay, wasn't all that we did during our life essentially pointless, okay? So I, I believe everyone should be focusing on planning for the next generation as well. So let's go through a, a kind of a simplistic situation to show why you should be thinking about the next generation. So we have a, a couple here. They have $750,000 in traditional IRAs. Okay, uh, their taxable income right now is $45,000 a year. That puts them in the 12% tax bracket. They have one son who is also married, or who is married. Uh, they're fairly well off, earning, having a taxable income of $140,000 per year. That puts them in the 22% tax bracket. Okay, and so what would happen if they died today, passed away today, and passed on that $750,000? Well, we're going to include growth here. I believe we're using 6% growth. Okay, and they're going to try to break and periodically equalize out those distributions over those 10 years. Okay, so the reason I say this is an ideal scenario, assuming no tax planning, is because, again, if they took, they could take all of that $750,000 distribution in year one. And unfortunately, we've seen this from time to time, uh, but obviously that would be the most tax inefficient way to do this. So they're breaking it up through these 10 years. Their first RMD is going to be $75,000. And I should say this isn't an RMD. This is that distribution. The only RMD is that they have to ex exhaust that entire account by 10 years. Their first distribution is going to be $75,000. But then the money that stayed invested in that traditional IRA is going to continue to grow. So that next distribution they're going to have is $78,000, then $81,000, then eighty five. It's going to rise all the way to $107,000. Again, assuming there's that static growth. And obviously, we know growth isn't going to be static, but again, this is a simplistic situation. So these distributions are large enough that they're going to put, it's going to push these uh, heirs from the 22% bracket into the 24% bracket, both of which are higher than where that parent would be taxed. The total estimated tax liability throughout all of these distributions is going to be $264,000. Now, granted, we're going to see some growth uh, so that $750,000 is going to grow to more than $750,000, but they're essentially paying in taxes a third of the money they originally passed on. Okay, so is there a better way? And the answer is yes, okay? Again, what should these uh, parents be doing? They should be thinking about the next generation, weighing the tax liability of the next generation to their tax liability. Now, they're in the 12% tax bracket. They're in some fairly low tax brackets given their situation. So wouldn't it make sense for them to max out that 12% bracket for uh, the remaining years that they have left and pass on par partially uh, pass on Roth IRAs as well as traditional IRAs to the next generation? Again, why would they max the, the bracket and not go further? Well, if they max the bracket, they're maxing that full 12% bracket. If they would go higher than that, they're converting at 22%. Well, the son and wife are going to be paying 22%. So unless they're converting at 22% in order to save at 24%, converting into the 22% bracket wouldn't make as much sense. So we're going to stay pretty simplistic here. Just max out the 12% bracket here. So what does this type of conversion strategy uh, translate into? And again, these results are going to vary widely. Uh, we don't know at the end of the day when you're going to pass away. So how many years of conversions you're going to get in or this, this couple is going to get in is going to vary widely depending on how they're invested. Obviously, that can vary as results as well. Uh, but essentially, we have them converting eight years prior to pass it away. Their total that they're going to convert into a Roth is going to be $291,000. Uh, ta tax cost of this conversion is going to be $48,000. So this is looking at if they would have converted starting eight years ago. Okay. Uh, so total, they're going to, uh, on paper, they're going to pass on less than the next generation. But remember, before when they were passing on $750,000 to the next generation, they were passing it all on pre-tax. And so part of what they're passing on now is going to be after tax. So it makes sense that it's less. Uh, we want to make sure that after tax they're passing on is more than the after tax after the heirs will pay their taxes. Okay. 
So they're going to pass on in this example $291,000 of Roth IRA, $394,000 of traditional IRA. So those traditional IRAs are going to be far less. The distributions, for the most part, are going to keep them in the 22% bracket. They might have to still go a little bit further in the 24% bracket. So that might even make a case that the, these parents should have converted even a little bit into the 22% bracket so that those heirs could completely avoid the 24% bracket. But again, we're getting into the, the nitty gritty at this point. Uh, the point being the total estimated tax liability of the heirs taking from the traditional IRA as well as um, the uh, tax cost of the conversion is going to be $186,000 in total. The point being, though, more in after-tax dollars is going to pass on to the heirs because of these parents converting at a 12% rate in order to avoid 22% and 24% rate, a uh, 24% rate with the heirs. Now, if you flip this situation around and we assume the parents are at a 22% rate and the heirs are at a 12% rate, now that this, uh, this strategy doesn't make as much sense. So it's extremely important to weigh your tax rate versus the heirs tax rate. In that scenario where uh, the parents are at 22% and the heirs are at 12%, the parents would actually wanna pass on more traditional IRA to the heirs and not convert at 22% because obviously 12% is much lower. Okay, but as we see here, approximately $80,000 in tax savings by thinking of the next generation as your tax planning towards the end of your life, uh, which is, again, is a, a fantastic tax savings moving to the next generation. And so this is what we would call multi-generational planning. It, was, it requires trust and transparency, and I understand not every uh, family can do this type of multi-generational planning. Why? Well, it, it requires you to not only know your tax situation, but also be informed of your heirs tax situation, which again, is some uh, uh, requires trust and transparency. Okay, but ideally, we want to start planning uh, well ahead of time. Okay, uh, in these, uh, essentially planning to see if Roth conversions make sense, or if passing money on passing those traditional IRAs on to the next generation makes more sense. Uh, ideally, we want to know who should be paying taxes, should you be paying taxes, or should your heirs be paying taxes. And it doesn't matter as long as we're paying the lowest amount in taxes. Okay, that should be the goal here. Uh, will certain be uh, beneficiaries benefit from inheriting specific accounts? You may want to pass on your Roth IRA to your child that's in the highest brackets. Maybe you have one child that uh, makes significantly more than the other children. Maybe they're in the 24 or even the 32% bracket. Well, you might want to pass on your Roth IRA specifically to them and pass on the traditional IRA to a, a child that's in the 12% bracket. And it, uh, there may be certain aspects too where you want to set up contingent beneficiaries and certain people want to disinherit accounts. So if you're a primary beneficiary, let's say you're the wife, uh, and you don't have a need for that money, you can actually disinherit the account, and it will then pass on to the contingent beneficiaries, uh, which, again, depending on your situations, might make sense. Okay, So hopefully this was informational and showed why Roth conversions can oftentimes also make sense when you're passing money on to the next generation. We covered a, a lot of ground, some of it very lightly, as far as the SECURE Act. If you're interested in learning more about the SECURE Act, again, we'll link to a video up in the right-hand corner here. Always remember, though, you don't need more money. You need a better plan. You need to know all of the reasons Roth conversions can make sense. Identify those reasons, reasons see if they make sense for your situation, and then implement a well-thought-out well Roth conversion strategy. Uh, if you like this video, hit subscribe down below, like this video. Um, uh, we really appreciate it. We'll see you again in next video. Thanks for watching today.